Here we are, everyone. Lab number one. Virtual lab number one. Boy, do I wish we were in the lab room doing some cool stuff with some cool gadgets. Beakers and test tubes and blowing up food and all sorts of fun stuff. But right now, we're forced to do it virtually, so here we go. Our first lab <clears throat> is on the scientific method. And this is something that goes right along with your first lecture on the scientific method. In this lab, we're going to be looking at the power balance bracelet. So, you already know the steps of the scientific method. I don't even need to review it because you've already watched the lecture video. So, if you don't already know them, make sure you know them. I talked about in the lecture video, I talked about of 20 commonly used ergogenic aids or things that are meant to improve performance. Of 20 commonly used ergogenic aids, how many have been proven to be effective through scientific research? You should be like raising your hand, bouncing up and down. I know the answer, 25%. Right? You don't have to know these word for word. I'm just making a point. All right. So we are going to go through a scientific method study. And we're going to do one on the power balance bracelet. If you haven't already seen it, it really reached its popularity heyday probably about 10 years ago. Um, but I think there's many other derivatives of it. The claim. What does the power balance company claim to do? Well, by wearing this plastic bracelet with a little hologram in it. They claim you can improve balance, strength, and flexibility in your athletics. How? And I quote from a video from their company, the power balance bracelet harnesses naturally occurring frequencies and programs them into a mylar hologram. Wow. So we're going to take this claim and we're going to put it to the test. Does this mylar hologram improve balance, strength, and flexibility. So, as we talked about in the scientific method, any study begins with an observation. So let's say that you're a high schooler playing basketball and you see many NBA players wearing the power balance bracelet. Oh my God, wow. Those famous basketball players are wearing the ba power balance bracelet. And they play really good. That's my observation. So some basketball players who I see on TV who wear the bracelet, they play really well. So from that, we're going to create a hypothesis. This is what's called a null hypothesis, that there's going to be no difference. But let me remind you of some of the things that we talked about in the lecture. A hypothesis is a statement. It is not a question. It has to be falsifiable. So after we run this study, will it be shown to be true, yes, or false, no? Here's our hypothesis. There will be no difference in performance between athletes that wear the power balance bracelet compared to those who don't wear the power balance bracelet. So we have our observation, and from that observation, we've made a hypothesis. Now we're ready to set up the experimental study. This study was actually performed. And I'm mad because there was, years ago, ESPN's Outside the Lines did a little video on this, but I cannot find it. They took it off the air because it's been, I guess, too many years or just to spite me. But I actually was able to find this study published in a peer-reviewed journal. So I know exactly what they did. So we're actually going to go through together a study that was really done at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse about the power balance bracelet. Now, you will see a lab assignment, basically a worksheet, that goes along with this lab. So make sure you're paying attention to these details because I'm going to ask you questions all about it. So how did, they, how did they set up the study? They looked at 24 athletes on the campus of that college. And of those 24 athletes, 10 were men, 14 were women. 
Each of the 24 athletes was tested under three conditions. They were tested once wearing the power balance bracelet. They were tested again wearing the power balance with the hologram removed. And they were tested once with no bracelet. The order was randomized. So depending on basically how the the dice rolled, sometimes maybe one person did it in this order, power balance bracelet, power balance hologram removed, no bracelet, but then someone else did it in reverse. It was randomized, so that way we could see the true effect. And it was double blind. And we know what that is from the lecture. I'm not going to tell you again because you've, you've already watched the lecture. You got it. So I want to lay out how they really did it. And I think visuals are good. So each athlete went through three conditions. Like I said, one condition was the actual power balance with the hologram. Another condition we're gonna call the placebo because they were wearing the band, but the hologram was removed. And then there was a control. A control means that they didn't wear the bracelet at all. Now, how they set this up was that they had a little wristband, a wrist sweatband. So they would have the athlete look away and then the researcher would put either of these three conditions on there and they would cover it with the wristband so when the person looked back they didn't see what was actually underneath the wristband and again these were randomized the order was randomized what was tested well We go back to the claims. What was the claim of the Power Balance Company? The claim was by wearing this hologram bracelet, you can increase balance, strength, and flexibility. So as a good researcher, what did they do? They tested balance, strength, and flexibility. And again, the order was randomized. At the end of the day, each person, each athlete did each of these tests in each of the three conditions. So that means that each person did nine tests. They did the balance once with the power balance bracelet. They did the balance again, power balance bracelet without the hologram. And they did the balance again with nothing. Same thing with the strength, same thing with the flexibility, but all the orders were randomized. How did they assess balance? Using a device similar to this. So they would have four conditions. They would be balancing on one foot with their eyes open, balancing on one foot with their eyes closed on a firm surface. And then this bottom surface can actually wobble. And they were able to objectively get a number of how well they could keep their balance. They measured strength using a bicep curl, using a bar, and they measured flexibility using a flexometer, which basically measures our sit and reach, really. But everything was objective, right? Measurable. How many kilograms of weight could they lift in the bicep curl? What number in centimeters were they actually able to reach using the flexometer? So here's what the data table looked like. So each person had three conditions, the power band, the power band without the hologram, which is the placebo, and the control, which is no bracelet, And they each did the strength, flexibility, and the balance for each condition. So there was a total of nine measurements for each subject. So what do you think happened? I'm going to ask you to pause and write down your hypothesis before you go on. Do you think that those that wore the power balance bracelet with the hologram, did they have better strength? better flexibility, and better balance versus those who did not wear the hologram bracelet. This is kind of cool. I mean, this is a real study on something that's really out there. I know baseball players wear those necklaces. Does it really work? Or is it just peace of mind? Or is it just a money-making scheme? What do you think? Well, Here are the averages. So of all 24 
Of all 24 athletes that were tested, these are the averages. So what do you think? Let's look at the strength. This is the amount of weight that could be lifted in kilograms for the biceps brachii, bicep curl. Do these numbers look that different between the conditions? Was the power bracelet with the band, could they lift more weight than the placebo or the control? Look at flexibility. Was flexibility the highest when they wore the band versus placebo and control? And they came up with a measure called the sway index for that balance test. Was the power balance bracelet significantly higher? Could they maintain balance better for the band versus placebo or control? I'm going to let you come to a conclusion. But I think looking at this data, it's pretty clear what the answer is. So have a look, pause the screen, go back, or take a screenshot, whatever you need to do. Was there a difference? For those of you that are more visual, I put on the actual graphs from, from the article. So here they have strength between the three groups. Do they look really that different? Here we have flexibility. Do the three groups look that different? And here we have the sway index for balance. Do the three groups look that different? Hmm. Now, what I will tell you, so I'm gonna let you come to a conclusion about the data on your own using either the numbers or the, the bar charts, but I do wanna tell you something they discovered. So I do wanna talk about the second order effect. So in addition to determining whether the power balance bracelet group did better than the other groups in strength, flexibility, and balance, what they looked at is something called the second order effect. What they found across the board for the 24 subjects, no matter what their order was, so remember they did three conditions. They had the bracelet with hologram they had the bracelet with a hologram taken out so the bracelet with no hologram and then they had no bracelet so for these three conditions no matter the order because remember the orders were mixed up some people did all sorts of orders no matter what order happened they did better in the strength, flexibility, and balance during their second and third tests. Why do you think they would do better on their second and third test, no matter what kind of bracelet they were wearing or not wearing? I'm not gonna give you the answer to this because I want you to figure it out, but I think we could all understand this. If I'm, if you're using this new piece of balance equipment, you know, if you walk into the lab, you've never seen that before probably. What's gonna happen between the first time you do it and then the second and third time you do it? Why would you do better the second and third time? So that's something they did find, but it wasn't related to what type of bracelet they were, they were wearing. So it wasn't because of the bracelet they were wearing. Hmm, interesting stuff, isn't it? All right, so after we make the observation, create a hypothesis, run the experiment, analyze the data, then we go back to our hypothesis and say either the hypothesis was true or it was not true. So I'm going to let you write that answer in your lab assignment. Was our original hypothesis found to be true or not true? And from that, you can come to a conclusion. Real data, ladies and gentlemen, real data. Here's a new story that came out a couple years ago on ESPN. Feel free to go to that. Um, I guess because it's a video, you can't just copy and paste but you can take a screenshot and recopy that into your browser. And then here is the 
reference for the article that I used. Okay, 2012 it came out and it was in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning. All right, so as we will with every lab assignment, once you're done viewing the video, uh, you're going to complete your lab worksheet. Good luck, everyone.